to the editor, messengers. I've personally been able to reflect on my own life and in several aspects of my life and what God is doing. And I have to say this, last week, God truly challenged me personally. Uh, It was a very challenging message. It was one of those messages that I feel God was, was really, really trying to speak something very personal and critical to me. And, uh, and I knew that he was about to speak this. I knew that he w- it was coming up. In fact, as we prepared for this message series, I knew what I was going to talk about weeks ago. In fact, actually, I knew months ago what we were going to talk about uh, because we planned this out months in ahead. In fact, we have uh, all of this year, for the most part, planned out already. Um, and so we kind of know what's coming up, and that, that way the team could work on it and that kind of thing. Anyway, the point is, is I knew what was coming up. And I knew that God wanted to speak something into my heart. I knew that he wanted to speak something into my life and that he was going to challenge me personally. And when I came to this message, I just wasn't prepared completely for how, uh, how much conviction he was going to bring to my own heart about the way I was living my life and spending my time. And so God brought a deep conviction about uh, me really dishonoring the Sabbath and not taking time to rest and living life out of balance. And, and now God is... Is, uh, and that, so I'm working on some things to really, uh, where God can fix those areas of my life. And, and I'll tell you what, this week, I, I wasn't picture perfect this week, but I did have more time to rest. Um, and uh, in fact, I slept in today, which was unique. And uh, especially on a Sunday morning. But the reason I could sleep in today is because the message was done Thursday afternoon. It was like it was done. And, and, uh, and then I was able to get up this morning and fine tune a few things. And, and I slept in. Yeah, it was amazing. I, I mean, I woke up at 725 this morning. Man, it was like weird. You know, I'm like, wait, the alarm didn't go off. And it probably did. But, you know, you're in the, you half sleep. You just go. And then you go back to sleep. None of y'all never done that. Okay. Uh, but. It was getting some rest and and honoring the Sabbath is important for me. And I'm looking forward to the season ahead to really getting that into a place where I honor God with that. But our takeaway from last week was this. Necessary edits, though difficult, are part of his process. Necessary edits, though difficult, are part of his process. And we learned through the life of Saul that Saul had a major life editing experience with God, right? Right? Uh, But in my life and in your life, God takes moments where he has to do a necessary edit. And though they're difficult, and at times, though we we don't don't like to embrace the necessary edits, uh, we uh, have to trust that it's part of God's process. It's part of him truly making, even as we're using the language of masterpiece. Uh, If he's going to truly bring about a masterpiece in your life, in my life, he's going to have to make some necessary edits. And when we go through those necessary edits, they're often difficult. Now, we don't, we don't bother with the daily edits that aren't that big, di- big of a deal, right? We just kind of go through those pretty easily, um, and uh, we kind of go through the flow of life, and it, it just happens. But then when we go through the major edits, uh-oh, it's like the life-altering stuff, you know? Uh, the times where, you know, uh, you get either sucker-punched by life or you get a rude awakening uh, in life, but ultimately you go through those experiences where they're a necessary at it. And though they're difficult, they're part of his process. And so as God creates a masterpiece in our lives, we must trust that his process uh, is good and that, that he is a good, loving, heavenly father and that his plans and purposes for our lives are absolutely good. How many of us are grateful for that this morning, that his plans and purposes are good? He is good. And so as we wrap up this amazing message series today, I want to take time Uh, to really uh, discover and discuss a final topic. In fact, the topic is called Final Submissions. Um, How many of you just loved when you were going through uh, uh, either high school or college and you had to submit a paper? How many of you loved that? Yeah, not many, right? Um, Some of you did, and you're you're like a a lifetime student. To me, you know, uh, that's kind of what like preaching is like. It's like every week I have to write an essay. And not only do I have to write an essay every week, I have to stand in front of people and make sure that the essay is not only written, but it's well presented. That's like every week. Anybody, anybody want to sign up for that job? Um, you know, come on, man, somebody. Uh, yeah, thank you. I got, I got a hand up for that one. Yeah. So, uh, but the truth is, is that 
you know, in our, uh, as we submit fi- our final submission, it goes through that process. Just like we talked through in this series, there's times where we make the, the rough draft and where there's times where we go through the necessary edits. But when it's all said and done, we submit a final submission. And that's what we want to talk about today. So I, I want to, today's going to be a little bit different. I, I don't know, every day's different, every Sunday's different, every day of life is different. Um, if it wasn't different, it would just not be very fun, would it? Uh, but today, I want to challenge you with something, and it's going to be a little bit different of a message, and I would pose the following thought-provoking question this morning. At the end of our lives, what will be said about us? At the end of our lives, what will be said about us? And I ask this question because one day we'll all have a final submission read about our lives. It may show up in a newspaper. It may show up at a funeral celebration service as we celebrate our lives and people come up and talk about us. But ultimately, at some point in our lives, uh, we will all have a final submission. I wish it's something we could avoid and we could live forever on earth, but thank God we don't have to. We can live forever in eternity, right? And, uh, and so ultimately we'll all have a final submission read about our lives here on earth. And, and there's a couple of thoughts that I thought about this morning that kind of line up with this message but aren't completely around the, the, the singular topic we're talking about. But a few things that I've said over the past couple of years that have resonated with me uh, that I'm sure I've repeated from somewhere else. Uh, the first one is this, is that the greatest accomplishment or the greatest contribution that we will leave here on earth or, 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 or accomplish in life is not necessarily something we do but someone we raise. And I would challenge you parents to really take on that mindset that the greatest contribution you'll leave in life and the legacy you'll leave behind may not be something you do, but probably will be someone you raise. And so how important then does it become that we raise great children and that we invest our lives in their future and in their life? Uh, It becomes of the utmost importance. And so the other thought is this. And that is that uh, when we get to the end of our lives, I don't want to personally, I don't want to hear great things said about me by the multitudes of people that uh, God has allowed me to influence. And, and whatever that multitude looks like, I don't know what it looks like. And I don't know what it will look like at the end of my life. But here's what I do know is that when, it gets, when I get to the end of my life, I would most want to hear that my family and uh, speaking of my wife and daughters have great things to say about me. That even my extended family, my my siblings and and, and those that know me closest, that know me the best, that they would say great things about me. Not that people, not not that I would uh, not want great things to be said about me, but ultimately it's who would say those things. And it's not just that, that there would be a mass of people that would come around and say this or say that about me, but what about my family? What about my daughters? What about my wife? Uh, because I would most want for them to say something as I consider my final submission. And the great thing about life is that as we consider our own unique final submissions, we have the opportunity every day to determine how that final submission will be read. Now, none of us really want to think about, th- you know, then, right? None of us want to think about our final submission. We all want to think about today. We all want to think about life. We want to think about what we have coming up in the week ahead or in the months ahead. I'm sure for many of you, you're preparing and planning for vacations and, and activities in the summer. And, and how many of the, uh, your kids are just done with school? You know, they're ready. And for you, you're like, no, stay in school all summer because then that means I've got to manage you this summer. I've got to figure out you this summer. Well, here's the thing. Here's what's nice. Uh, when your kids get a little bit older, you, you just let them figure themselves out, and it works out somehow by God's grace, um, thankfully. And uh, so as every time I come to do a funeral, uh, I'm reminded to consider how I'm living my own life. And, uh, and I'm not only reminded how I live my life, but I'm asked, I ask myself this question, what legacy will I leave behind? What legacy will I leave behind? I also realize how incredibly short life is. That life is fleeting. It's but a moment. We're going to read about that in God's Word because it provides a reminder for us in Psalm 39, verses 4 and 5. And as we unpack this uh, text this morning, it reminds us how how short life is. Now, uh, let's go and read in uh, Psalms 39. We start in verse 4. It says, Lord, remind me how brief my, my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. 
And so our time on earth is, is really, it's limited. Remind, in fact, the verbiage, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. Life is short, you know. YOLO, you only live once, you know. Live life to the fullest, right. And, and life is short. We hear these same sayings. In fact, uh, I, I mentioned this earlier that we were pulling up to have lunch yesterday and uh, there was a, a kid walking extremely cl- slow across, across the road or the parking lot. And, of course, I'm always in a hurry. And so I'm like, hurry up, kid. And uh, I can't remember if it was my brother-in-law, my wife. They probably said it in tandem. They're like, life's short, man. Take a chill pill, dude. You know, like, relax. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to make this kid's life even shorter right now, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, of course, I didn't, but I thought it, you know. And, uh, and, but the point is this, is that we're always in a rush, but life is short. It happens quickly. <clears throat> And if you just evaluate your own life, no matter what stage you're in, no matter what age you're at, no matter if you're, if you're in uh, middle school or high school or college or, or whether you're a, a young parent or whether you're uh, in your 20s or in your 30s or 40s or 50s, you know, uh, or, or maybe you're north of 50s and, and you're like, you have no idea. You're telling me you have no idea how fast life really is because it's but a moment. In fact, uh, Miss Jada is probably serving right now. I don't see her. So she's probably helping out somewhere. Uh, and, and, uh, but Miss Jada, our, our middle daughter, was all of 11 months old when we moved here. Um, and, and I'll never forget because she, she was the cutest baby. Uh, think about Jada. And when, when she was six months old, she was speaking in full sentences. No, it wasn't quite like that. Uh, but she, she just... She, I don't know what it was, and she's actually the quietest of our kids, uh, but she, she spoke uh, early on, and she spoke really well. And, uh, you know, she would just come out and be like, you know, I was thinking about the astronauts, and as I anticipate, you know, them going into the outer space. No, it, but it was amazing. It was that kind of like, and in fact, there was a story my wife tells, and, and, and I, I'll probably botch the story, but it's this idea of, of who was watching Jada? Who? Okay, so one of, okay, yes, here's the scenario. So, um, you know, Mary's father, my father-in-law, had an, an accident that, that uh, almost nearly took his life. And so we uh, had to go to Albuquerque, and of course we're in a frantic state of like, what do we do? And Jada, we ask one of, one of uh, uh, our cousins, we ask his mom to watch uh, Jada. And at the time, Jada's asleep. And, uh, and, and, and so she's like, yeah, no problem, you know, and Jada gets up and she probably wakes up and says, hello, how are you? My name's Jada. What's your name? And by the way, where are my parents? And she's all of two years old. I mean, you just like, and, and Connie at the time, she just freaked out. She was like, she, what, well, how she picked her up? Yeah, so she picked her up out of the crib, right? And Jada starts talking and she thought it was like, Chucky or something, because she just like, she just like, she wanted to, she just like nearly dropped her, because she's like, this is impossible, you know, pint-sized little girl talking so much, but the point is, is that she was 11 months old when we moved here, and now in August, she'll be 12 years old, that means we've spent uh, the last almost 11 years of our lives pastoring Junction Community Church, it went by like that, it's amazing, time truly does Fly. And so as we uh, are reading this verse and we're unpacking the scripture, it says, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. And then he goes on to say in verse 5, you have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. Like, you know, it's like when you really think about that, you look to your hand and, and I've got massive, you know, hands. I should have played basketball, um, you know, uh, and, and, and. And, uh, you know, because I could just grab a a basketball like it's a tennis ball. Okay. Um, So I've got small hands, okay? And, uh, and, and, you know, and and the thing is, is that I look at the width of my hand and I'm like, you know, that, that is, that is, that is a small, uh, small reference point of how fleeting our lives are. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. And it's the reminder that it's just from there to there. It's really short. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. 
And that, when it says that, it's very sobering for me because I realize that in the light of eternity and in, the, in light of who God is, that he sees yesterday, today, and tomorrow at one time, which is, causes us to have a brain freeze because yeah, how do we understand that? But when God sees the big picture of life, he sees our life and it's but a moment. And in all reality, that's very true because, you know, he sees, he sees all, of our, all of life and then here we are, whether we're here for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, even, not, even if we're here for 100 years, in the light of human history, it's but a moment. It's but a moment. It's very fleeting. It's but a moment in the eyes of God. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. And it says, at best, at best, each of us is but a breath. Ready? Everybody, ready? Take a big, deep breath. Just like that. Parents, if you have kids that are younger, enjoy every moment. Now, I know that I'm in the middle of that whole process. I know that I'm in the middle of, like, I, I, I have my, my oldest daughter, Miss Rebecca, will be all of 15 in June. Can you believe that? 15 years old. I cannot believe it. Um. So now she enters the season of mandatory groundedness. Um, no, she looks at me like, yeah. Um, she just gave me the look like, Dad, you're the best dad in the whole world. You're absolutely amazing. I love you. You're so wise. You're so intelligent. And you absolutely know every day what's best for me. I appreciate you, Daddy. And I will honor you, Daddy, all the days of my life. In thought, in deed, in action, in interaction, because you are the best dad ever. And Miss Rebecca said, Amen. <laughs> Fifteen. Time, uh, it really goes by fast. In fact, let me just give you guys some perspective because I, am, I was forgetting my age in the earlier service, but I am all of, of 38 years old. I'm knocking on 39. My wife is, is, is I'm not going to tell you her age, but she is my elder. Um, I'm in trouble now. But here's, here's the other thing about elders. She's wiser, she said. She is. And here's the other thing about elders. Like, I've got an older brother here. He's old. He's ancient. He's got four years on me, and he's old, man. I mean, um, you know, I'm still, I'm still, anyhow, when I moved here in August of 2007, I was all of 27 years old. And I was invited to pastor this great church with all of the wisdom that every 27-year-old individual has. And to myself, I'm thinking like, only God. Only God. Because I was 27 years old. And, you know, I, I think back and I had no idea all that God would do. And I, had, I still have no idea all that God will do. But ultimately, as I look back these almost 11 years ago, I was 27 years old. And I really had no clue all that God would do in and through our lives at Junction Community Church. But I'm grateful that he did. And... Going back to the text, each of us is but a breath, that our lives are fleeting, it's very quick, that we, you know, before you know it, we go from 27 to 38 really quick. We go from 38 to, to the ripe old age of whatever is beyond that, I don't want to offend anybody, uh, to, to really quickly. And before you know it, life passes us by. And before you know it, we spend our lives in, in, this, in this moment of, of realizing that it goes by far too quickly, that life is indeed short. The thing about our youth and our youth is that we overestimate uh, how, how really short life is, right? We overestimate it. We just think, I'm going to live forever, whatever forever is, you know? And we just think, I'll be here forever. You know, here's the other thing, and, and, I, and I know this brings up some real emotions for many of us today, but we just think that people are going to live forever, you know? I, I never, I never want to see my parents go. I never want to see, I never wanted to see my grandparents go. You know, it's like, no, like they're just going to live forever, right? That's just the way it goes. It's, they'll just be here forever. That's, no. We will all have a final submission. 
we will all have a brevity of life lived here on earth. And the question becomes, what will be our own unique final submission? And so, as the Apostle Paul neared the end of his life, in fact, we talked about uh, Saul, uh, who is also called Paul, and this great apostle, as we talked about him last week, had a major necessary edit in the middle of his life, where he went from being the persecutor of the church to being the preacher of the gospel. And he had this major necessary edit in the middle of his life, and as he goes through this, God begins to set the tone for the rest of his life. And then fast forward, as we near the end of his life, we get to this text that we're about to read in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And Paul says this regarding his own life. He says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. He says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And so what's happening in the life of Paul is that he has now lived his life to declare the gospel to those around him, to the church, and he's towards the end of his life, and his final submission is getting ready to be written. Like the final edits of his life, the final submission of his life is about to be written, and he comes here and he says some interesting things. He says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. And like Paul, I want to be able to say of my own life, whenever my final submission is read, that I have fought the good fight, that I have finished the race that was set before me, and I have kept my faith intact. Here's the challenge. In life, we have to be careful not to judge ourselves or life too harshly. Because there are moments where we're going to be in the battle, there are moments where we're going to be on the racetrack and we're going to fall flat on our faces. We're going to fall down. There are moments where we're not only going to fall down, but there are going to be moments where we're thinking we're in the fight and we're ready to make this happen and we're ready to go to battle and, and we're there we are and we're going to get sucker punched right in our faces. We're going to get, we're going to, we're, at that moment, we're going to get to a place where we, not only, where we get sucker punched, we get sucker punched. And it's going to be that moment where all of a sudden we get to a place in life and we realize that, 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 that in that moment and at that time that, that ultimately we got caught off guard and we got sucker punched. And we're going to, we're going to find ourselves looking up like, what happened, Right? What happened? And so what I would say to that is is that in that moment and in our lives, we have to realize that that we're either up or getting up, right? I often say this, we're either up or getting up. We're never down. We, you know, if we're down, it's momentary. It's like, it's like you remember the, 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 you know, the toys uh, that like were weighted at the bottom? Y'all remember those? And it was, I don't know, like a superhero or something. And you could like give it a good jab and it would fall, go, it would go down and come back up. Y'all know, you ever seen one of those? No? Okay, some, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't know. Okay, so, you know, this toy though, uh, you can punch it, you can jab it, and it's going to come back up. And that's the way we should be in life, is that no matter what we get knocked down by, no matter what trips us up, no matter what comes our way, we might get knocked down, but we're, we're, we're going to get right back up. We're going to get right back up. And so, in life, we're either up or we're getting up, but we're never down. And Paul says, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I've kept the faith. And then he finishes with this in verse 8. He says, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. What he's saying is, guys, like focus on the prize. Focus on the fact that on our final submission, it's not just about the life we've lived here on earth, but it's the life we'll live in eternity. And I said this last week, and I'll reference it again, and and what I said last week is that ultimately that God, as he makes necessary edits in our lives, he does it with our character and eternity in mind. He's thinking about the big picture of our lives because God sees the big picture. He's not just looking at the right here, right now of our lives. We do that very good. We're like right here, right now, this is what's happening in my life, but God sees the big picture. 
And, and what Paul is saying here is, look, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, all of these things. He says, look, and there's, a, and a, there's a, a, a reward that will be awarded to me, and on that day I'll receive this crown of life, this crown of righteousness that comes from God, and I'll be promised eternity. Here's the problem. Most of us live our lives in the here and now, and we focus all of our lives not on eternity. This is called the battle rope. You ever, ever, anybody ever worked the battle rope? Let's see if I don't hit anybody today. Yeah, that's about as far as I can get it without being too aggressive here. All right. This is a long rope. In fact, Pastor Michael, would you grab the other end of that rope? This is a long rope. It's a long rope, right? So here's the deal. Most of us live our lives with, etern- with, with this temporary experience of life in mind. Like, go, why don't you bring it up here and maybe you can kind of see kind of how long it is. It's like a big old snake. Some of you like snakes. Some of you are scared. Pastor Abel's not here because he's a snake. And you can go ahead and just leave it on stage. P- Pastor Abel's on vacation, but he's scared of snakes. So um, dude, we, should, we should set him up with the... F- <laughs> like one day, dude, a fake snake with like a string on it or something. No, right in the middle of worship. Sorry, I get very distracted. (laughs) Let's scare them. So here's the thing. This is a big, long rope, right? And it goes around and around, but here's the thing. Most of us live our lives not in consideration of the reward that's ahead of us, the eternity that's ahead of us. And we live our lives on earth, which is just about, what did the Bible say? A hand with our lives. And so in light of eternity, we're focusing and living all of our lives right here. This is it. There's a lot more life ahead of us. But we live our lives focusing on this little bit. In fact, I think that's kind of generous if you really think about eternity. It's probably even just like, you know, right? Who knows? It's really, really not that much. And therefore, we should live our lives with eternity in mind. We should live our lives focused on not just the here and now, but focused on eternity. Focused on the fact that God, when he makes necessary edits, he does it with our character and eternity in mind. And we should live our daily lives in such a way that when our final submission of this little bit of our lives would make all the difference for the eternity of our lives. Does that make sense to you this morning? It's just a little bit. It's but a breath. It's but a hand width. It's fleeting. It's in this moment. And so we've got to keep eternity in mind and realize that even in moments where we fall flat on our face or we get sucker punched that we're a work in progress but God is faithful to complete his work in us amen and so don't get too down on yourself I've had some moments where I've really dropped the ball where I've made some major mistakes and you know what in that moment I've got to decide and determine that I'm not going to stay down I'm going to get up And not only am I going to get up, but I'm going to make myself better because of those places where I fell flat on my face. Because I know that God is not done with me. God is still working in me. In fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 says this. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Like here's the truth. Our bodies are wasting away. I would love to be physically 19 again. You know? But my body says, no, you're 38. And I know some of y'all are like, oh, 38, that's not that bad. Well, it's not that bad, but... I mean, I know it's not 42, because that's ancient. (laughs) Yeah. Here's the thing. Your body starts to waste away. In fact, I was doing some work, and and the craziest thing now, I've got this, it's been several days, it's almost a week now. I've got this numbness in the left side of my leg, and it just won't go away. And it's happened before. But what it is, is it's the reminder of you are aging your body is wasting away but here's the thing at least my left knee you ready for this 
my left knee is still intact. So I can do, you know, I don't have great balance, I guess, but I can do this. Ready? Ah, that's, that's, that's the left knee's intact. It might be numb on this side, but at least it's intact. Now the right knee, I don't know when it happened, but something happened to my right knee. So I'm going to try to do the same thing. Ready? And right in that region, I don't want to go any lower because it hurts. And I don't know what happened. If, if, I do, if you ever, you know, we like to work out. That's why this thing is here. We have a great group on Tuesday nights. We work out here. It's a lot of fun. Um, but when, when, if you've ever been next to me and you hear me do a squat, you're like, man, that sounds like a tin, squeaky old man because just my knees are just like, it's, it's horrible. Like, it's, you know, I walk up the steps and it's like, And I'm not that old, man. I'm only 38. I mean, I got a lot of life. But outwardly, you're wasting away. Yet inwardly, you're being renewed day by day. And though our physical bodies are wasting away, we hold on to the promise that even though we're, we're, our bodies are wasting away, inwardly, we know that there is a future hope for us, that our, our eternity with God is intact, and that we're being renewed on the inside, that our faith is being strengthened. It goes on to read and say in verse 17, It says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And then one verse I I didn't put in there, but verse 18 says this, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What is seen is temporary but a moment but then we have all this life of eternity ahead of us all this life that's going to keep going and going and going and we're going to live eternity with God and there's all this life and so the Bible the exhortation to us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 is so we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal And my challenge to us today as we conclude this message series, Letters to the Editor, is that we would fix our eyes on eternity and we would live our lives in the temporary existence of life on earth with the focus of eternity in mind. That this is just but a moment. And I want to make the most of it. I do. Trust me. I want to make the most of my life. I want great things to be said about me when my final submission is submitted. But at the end of the day, I know what's going to help me achieve that in life is by focusing on the big picture of eternity, not just the here and now of temporary life on earth. I know it's hard for us to understand because we're limited by space, we're limited by time, but our lives really are fleeting. Eleven years goes by really quickly. Fifteen years goes by really quickly. But I'll never forget the night that Rebecca Joy was born. I'll never forget the night because I got on the phone and I called my brother Micah and I was like, dude, the baby's coming. She was the first grandchild of my of my parents and even great-grandparents, right, Grandma Betty? She was the first on that side. And uh, so then Becca came. And now my parents have, how many? I don't know. Twelve, something in there? I don't know. A lot. So, eleven. They're counting them. Miss Rebecca was number one. I remember calling him that night. And I'll tell you what, I, we knew she was a girl. And uh, I, I just said, I, I couldn't talk, man. I got all choked up. <laughs> I was like, the baby's, co- I just wanted to cry. And, and, and you all know what it's like to have a child. Well, some of you don't, but, but here's the thing. At that moment, it feels like last night, but it was 15 years ago. I remember being 15. I remember looking my dad in the face when I was 15 years old, and I was, and I told him, Dad, you don't understand but my life is over. There's nothing to live for. And that's why I know Becca's like, Dad, you're all wise. You you knew it all at 15. Um, At 15, 
I remember telling my dad, my life is over, you don't understand. And I painted the worst picture in the world because I was going through all kinds of challenges and struggles. And, and yet God was like, my dad was like, that's cute. And God was like, you have no idea, young man, what I'll do in your life. And fast forward 23 years later, God knew what he was doing when I was a 15-year-old boy that had no clue. And the truth is, there's not a single one of us who knows the length of our own lives today. Who knows whether we will live to an old age or be taken far too early. Going back to where we started this morning, the question becomes, what will be said of our life here on earth? What will be said of our final submission? Your life. What would be said about you? As I think about my own life, there are thoughts that, I've, that I have concerning my final submission. But I would be most honored if my faith was paramount. And I would be doubly honored if my children and grandchildren spoke highly of me. That would be enough. Anything else that's said of my life, of my final submission, it's all gravy. But if my children and grandchildren would say great things about me, that would be most meaningful because those who are closest to me know me best. It's not about what you see on stage, although what you see on stage is pretty much what you get with me. Like, here's the bottom line is that one day I will have grandkids. I know. And what I, I don't even want to think about that. What I'm praying is that God somehow, just like Jesus was somehow, you know. Anyway. Some of y'all. I, I want grandkids, but like, Lord, let them come supernaturally. One day I'll have grandbabies. And I want to be a, I'm a grumpy old man, Mary said the other day. She said, don't be a grumpy old man, I think is what she said. She didn't call me a grumpy old man. She said, don't be a grumpy old man. And I'm thinking to myself, like, man, I get grumpy around kids. Like, I'm, that, that's why I'm not the children's pastor. Let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? But as a grandfather, I want to, I want to, I want to go all in. Like, I, I don't have sons, but when I have grandsons, Homeboys are going to be hooked up. We're going to have some fun. And they're going to be like, dude, Grandpa is a tough man. Because we're still going to wrestle. I'm going to, I'm going to wrestle with them. I'm going to get geese on them when they can barely move. And I'm going to choke them for fun. No. But see, I want my children and grandchildren to say the most meaningful things about me. And so as we conclude today, I challenge you to completely entrust your final submission to God the editor-in-chief. Trust your life's end and legacy to him, for he alone is good and he alone is capable of writing a masterpiece of our final submissions. And as a takeaway today, I leave you with this final thought. Final submissions are written in the daily details of life. Make each day a masterpiece. You see, we've been using this language of a masterpiece. We've talked about that but at the end of the day final submissions are written in the daily details of life you don't just get there all of a sudden at the end of life you get there because day in and day out you decide that I'm going to make my life a masterpiece I'm going to make my life great I'm going to do all that I can to honor God honor those around me I'm going to live my life to the fullest so we're going to worship for a moment I'm going to invite you to stand and as we worship today I want us to truly begin to say, God, I surrender, and I submit my life to you. And all that I am, I just give it all to you. And as I think about my final submission, I'm saying, God, I want my story to reflect your goodness in my life. I want my story to honor you. I want my story to benefit those who to hear of it. But most importantly, let it be a blessing to those who are closest to me. Come on, let's worship God for a moment together.
Come on, make this your prayer. Surrender all that we are because we know that you're a good editor in chief. Yes. And as our final submissions are submitted, we want to have known that we've lived the lives that have honored you. So, God, I pray that you would challenge us each day, that we would make daily masterpieces of our lives. Some days are going to feel like we knock it out the park and some days are going to feel like we barely got out of bed. But at the end of the day, God, let us be reminded that you are a good editor-in-chief and you're working out your very best for our lives. In fact, one more thing before we conclude today. Because if God is going to be the editor-in-chief, if you're going to surrender your life to him, if he's going to write your final submission, it ultimately begins in a life-giving relationship. So if you're here today and you say, look, I need to commit my life to Christ, or maybe you're saying, I need to recommit my life to Christ, I want to give you that opportunity today. And so with every eye closed for a second, if you say, that's me, I need to commit to recommit my life to Christ, would you just lift your hand really high, right where you're at, God sees your hands all over this place, and would you just put it right back down, God sees your hand. Anybody else, you say, that's me, just lift your hand real high and then put it right back down. God sees your hand. And I'm going to invite everybody listening to the sound of my voice, whether online or in this place, I'm going to ask that you would repeat a simple prayer with me. Would you just say, Jesus, today I surrender all. I commit my life to you. You are Lord and Savior. From this day forward, write my story. Show me your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just thank God for those that are responding today?